Greet you all in the highly exalted, wonderful, precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to the whole Bible tour in three years. Turning our Bibles to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, verses 1 to 16. After the huge disturbance uh, that happened in Ephesus, where Darmetrius and all the silversmith and the city uh, came together, after it all subsided, then in verse 1 it says, Paul sent for the disciples, and after encouraging them, he bid them farewell, and uh, he left to go to Macedonia. Now, uh, anything in this world, anything in this world, um, any news in this world will slowly die away. Any any human emotion will slowly wade away. And so we need to always stand upon the word of God that stands forever and upon the principles of God that stand forever. And when we base ourselves on just our adherent uh, uh, rush or on our emotions, on uh, uh, the pressure of people, uh, down the lane it will slowly fall away and fade because passion and uh, emotion, uh, the source is a limited heart, a limited mind, and so it will slowly fall away. But when it comes from the Lord, that is what stands forever. And uh, what happened there, uh, it slowly died away. Throughout history, we see this, that uh, persecution rose. The church was uh, um, uh, tortured. And uh, slowly, as the church consistently prayed and looked upon the Lord, uh, those countries came to know the Lord personally as their Savior. So uh, we are called to persistently pray persistently stand upon the word of God and then we can accomplish something eternal not just because of our emotion but because of the power that God gives. And so after the disturbance died down the disciples there were encouraged by Paul and then uh, he went away from there and after that he came to Greece uh, where he stayed for three months. Now his plan was actually to go uh, by ship to Syria. So this is a very crucial verse. In verse 2, it says um, where he stayed for three months because the Jew Jews have made a plot against him uh, as he was intending to sail to Syria, he decided to return through Macedonia. So he wanted to sail, but because the Jews wanted to kill him uh, in between, immediately he changes his plans and he goes by road. Now, uh, a very important message that needs to be noted here is um, that uh, man's plans are many, but God's plan always succeeds. So Paul planned uh, that he wanted to go by the sea, but because of the plot being unraveled, Paul took the road route. And because he took this road route, many of the churches uh, were encouraged and they were uh, equipped to stand for the Lord. This is something like uh, what happened to Joseph in Genesis chapter 50 and verse 20. It says, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for the saving of many lives. So they intended to kill Paul to destroy his ministry, but actually their plot changed the route of Paul and extended the ministry of Paul. So when we are right with God, when we trust God and we and when we trust providence and walk by his way, um, then uh, our, when our plans uh, are subject to change because of God's uh, intervention, then obviously, obviously, um, ministry will grow, it will be extended and uh, God's name will be glorified. So we also always should keep our plans flexible enough for God's intervention. Whatever may seem best for us, uh, you know, it might not be the best for God. God's plans are way, way too big and uh, precious than uh, the plans that we have for ourselves. And so we need to come to the Lord and with, after all our diligent planning and all, we need to leave it into the hands of God. Uh, in fact, a man of God said, "You, uh, God's will is like you write everything with a pencil and then give the eraser into God's hands. How beautiful it is that uh, Paul had plans, but when God changed uh, it sovereignly, he changed and uh, that, that became good for all the churches there. And verse 4 onwards, we see uh, Paul was accompanied by Sopater, 
uh, the son of uh, Pyrrhus from Beria, and so many other people. Although uh, here explicitly, why these many people were following is not written. Yet, uh, we have to remember that at this time, he was carrying a gift from all these churches to Jerusalem. And so, um, he there are two strong reasons for carrying so many people. The first thing is, um, uh, this uh, big uh, group of people would be a protection for this collection of money that they are taking to Jerusalem. And second, Secondly, these people represent different churches in different areas. And so uh, when these people are taken, then uh, obviously it would be a better means of accountability. Having the uh, donor church uh, take the donation is always um, accountable. And uh, maybe uh, that was the reason why uh, Paul took uh, all of these people. And uh, we see Sopater might be a variant of the name of uh, Saucipater in Romans chapter 16 and verse uh, 21, who was uh, Paul's relative. And uh, since uh, Derbe is in Galatia, uh, this Gaius, uh, uh, who is written here, is different uh, maybe from uh, uh, the Gaius mentioned in uh, uh, 19th chapter. And Tychitus was uh, a faithful courier uh, for Paul. Um, in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 21, we read about him. And Trophimus was uh, a Greek uh, who traveled with Paul because of whom um, the whole Jerusalem was against Paul and Paul went through uh, prison. So what all happened in the future? That was not in Paul's control. Paul was just concerned about whether he was doing the right thing in the present, whether he was doing the safe thing in the present. So we are people who are concerned about our present and uh, we can have a long vision we should have a long vision we can have planning but then we should be flexible enough uh, to be overruled by god's sovereignty because all that we know is very limited and uh, from there on uh, um, in verse 6 they sailed to philippi after the days of uh, uh, unleavened bread and within five days they came to Troas, uh, where they stayed for seven days and there in verse 7 it says on the first day of the week now since luke uh, typically uh, he talks about the Roman system. Here, the slaves, for the slaves, Sunday was not a holiday. And so, obviously, the meeting was in the evening. And uh, so, because they were uh, tired throughout the day, that could be one reason why Eutychus uh, fell, Eutychus fell and uh, he died. Uh, so, we need to know the context. And uh, this is the first time that the first day of the week, Sunday gathering, is being mentioned. And when they came together, they came together to break bread uh, and uh, because he wanted to leave um, he spoke to them continuously the passion within uh, Paul was not just to discharge some kind of voluntary duty but it was to do it with all his heart and that's why he preached until late night and there were many lambs in that uh, upstairs room it was on the th third story and uh, these lambs were actually torches uh, they had a handle and uh, they had uh, uh, a space for oil and a wick and uh, the fire. Uh, so uh, maybe it was a very warm uh, room uh, in those days when people would gather because the upper floors in those days uh, did not have much partitions and that, that was why it was a wider place. And that's why we see even in Acts chapter 2, um, when these uh, people gathered, they gathered in the upper room because in the lower place, they would have more walls, but in the upper place, uh, it would be more like a hall. And so gatherings would mostly be on the upper side. And so because it had many rooms, uh, maybe uh, there were large windows uh, so that uh, uh, people could uh, respirate and it would not get heated up. And uh, Eucytus was sitting in such a window. And from there he fell and he died. But Paul uh, goes down and uh, he uh, he does what has been done by prophets in the Old Testament, and then he says he's he's alive, um, he's uh, he's still living, and he goes back, breaks, breaks bread and eats, and continues to speak to them, and finally they all they all are encouraged because uh, Eutychus uh, uh, came came back to life, and from verse thirteen onwards uh, we see um, that Paul asked them to go by the sea while Paul wanted to take the route. So Paul was an expert traveler 
and uh, he had a great idea about uh, how to make things happen in timing. And so Paul told them, you take the sea route. So that would take a very long time uh, because every place mentioned would be one day stop. And so if around uh, six, six places are mentioned, then obviously it would be more than six days. But for Paul, it was a very quick journey. So Paul wanted to save time. Paul wanted to save uh, uh, energy and give it to the disciples by encouraging them. And uh, uh, later Paul meets them and uh, Paul also comes aboard and uh, he, he calls the Ephesian elders to come and meet him because he didn't want to go to Ephesus uh, because he was in a hurry to go to Jerusalem, um, if possible, by the day of Pentecost. So in this portion, we see Paul Paul's planning, but flexibly shaped by God in his sovereignty. And man wanted to destroy it, but God used that plan and uh, extended his ministry. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for the life of Paul. And thank you that how that so many times you outrule our planning, you overrun our plans and do what is good, what is beneficial for eternity. Thank you, Lord. Jesus' wonderful, precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you.